Yo, what is going on Comfy Gang? It's your boy Comfy Neat. And today I wanted to make a little video um, really more directed to myself. Um, and that's because yeah, this might be probably one of the dumbest video ideas I've made in a while. Maybe not as much of a snooze fest as my previous video, but um, yeah, this one's probably kind of dumb, but um, basically it's a little reminder you know, more, more so to myself specifically, but, you know, maybe, I guess, to other needs out there or, you know, just people in general, wages, needs, whatever, that, you know, life could be so much worse. And just a little reminder, again, mostly to myself, to be, uh, you know, more grateful. Maybe I'll, like, go back and watch this in the future. But, um, yeah, and the reason I feel this way... <laughs> is honestly kind of retarded but um basically last night um i had this dream where um i had this dream where i don't know i forget the details because you know how like when you when you dream and you kind of remember it in detail for like the first 30 minutes after waking up but as the day goes on you like forget most of it except maybe like the core like takeaway from the dream or like maybe like a few like key details, but basically I forget if I was like framed or if like I like did this out of self-defense, but apparently in this dream, I was on, <laughs> I was on trial. Uh, I was on trial for like stabbing somebody, <laughs> but yeah, I think it was out of like self-defense or something, but basically it was out, it was out of self-defense and um i don't know like the person died okay this is i swear like i'm not like a violent person like i've actually never hurt anybody and i don't intend to but it's just you know it's a dream right uh so yeah i think i might have been framed too i forget which but the point is i was on trial and you know the judge <laughs> friggin looked like uh what's it called what's her name ruth Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because <laughs> I guess I've been seeing her on the news, you know, rest in peace, obviously, but like, yeah, the judge looked like a R RBG and I, I don't know, like, I forget, but it was like, I was on trial and then, I don't know, this judge who kind of looked like her, um, well, she, I don't know, they were, they were saying all this crap, and it was weird because it wasn't taking place in a courtroom, but it was kind of, like, taking place with my, in, like, my own, like, uh, like, my old, like, band classroom, you know, like, how, like, you have those band rooms, and then there's, like, and there's, like, the, uh, the podium where the conductor is, and it's, like, the judge was, at the podium except it was like a like that desk thing that the judges have at court and um there was like a witness stand too but then all the seats were kind of like positioned as if it were like in a i don't know what they call like a like a band basically yeah a band and i was had my lawyers i forget what they look like to my right side but my parents were like sitting to my left and <laughs> and um i don't know some some some, some stuff went down and uh you know all of a sudden somehow like this judge started being like a like an like an asshole to me so uh i remember being like super like worked up like finding it so unfair i think she was like pulling some like i don't know like obviously was not on my side obviously that's not how a judge is supposed to work but um <laughs> but this yeah, this judge was like pissing me off and then eventually i was like super exasperated because i was on trial for basically murder not even like manslaughter but like murder and um i you know i was obviously pretty emotional in the dream and then i called i just you know said some like next shit to the judge and you know i called her cunt or something and well this judge was not too happy about that and was like said something along the lines of F it, you know, 
you're not having a jury trial anymore. I find you guilty. <laughs> like, obviously, this is not how court works at all, thankfully. <laughs> but um, I was found guilty. And in that moment, I just remember the sheer like feeling of my heart dropping out of my chest and that impending hopelessness that, you know, washed upon me and just thinking and feeling just complete and utter despair. Just the, I, that feeling of like, holy crap, my life is over. Cause when you think about it, when you go to prison, even if it's for like 10 years, let alone like murder charges, which are at least like minimum 40 years, it's like your life is pretty much over. And it kind of just puts into perspective how valuable your time is. And I was like, holy crap, like, holy, I'm trying not to swear, like, holy crap, my, my life is over. And then I just remember, you know, I think I was crying. I think I broke down in tears in the dream, in the dream, or maybe not, but I just remember all of a sudden, you know, looking at my parents and wanting to like hug them regardless of what they did to me uh, in the past. And it's like, so it kind of made me, it kind of made me realize that, yeah, you know, they're not perfect, but they tried their best. And um, I also remember just kind of like the look of sadness on their face like disappointment, disappointment, sadness, fear, and just like me all of a sudden wanting to reach out to them and like hug them and shit. And I'm just probably extremely cringe, but yeah. And um, just also just the thoughts are going through my head, like how the hell am I gonna survive like prison life and you know, like, how am I going to survive like prison life and like, um, yeah, just the harshest of that. And me like coming up with all these thoughts like, oh, you know, in prison, like, you know, maybe if I just check in a solitary, I won't get my, I don't know, <laughs> I won't get violated. <laughs> I can, I can check in a solitary if I can handle it. And maybe if I just do pushups every day, if I practice, you know, boxing, that'll help me keep my sanity despite being alone like 23 hours of the day. I can you know, make sure to take in all the sunshine in the courtyard and cope. And it's like, you know how people, you know, how people say like, oh, like you're, you're coping this, you're coping that, you know, you know, you shouldn't do this because it's cope. Like, nah, like actual cope is going to prison and having to rationalize the fact that your life is basically over and trying to come up with stuff like, oh, yeah, I can do this. I can do that. You know, it's not truly that it's not really that bad. It, you know, I could probably, this is my new life now. What can I do? Like that's actually cope. Like, holy crap. But I actually thought like my life was over. And I remember in the car ride back, I don't know. It's like weird. Cause like somehow like my dad was driving and all of a sudden he's like, picked up like old friends or like acquaintances from like high school and I was just like talking to them and I just I don't even know it was like just like catching up I guess but it was like all of a sudden I realized like you know okay like maybe talking to people isn't so bad you know maybe I should have I should have taken the time to uh try and get to know to know people better and not be so messed up and um it was just like, yeah, all of a sudden, like, and it's just, it's dumb because it's just a dream, but it kind of made me, uh, it kind of put into perspective all the things. Like, I'm not saying my life is perfect. It's far from perfect. And there is a lot that could improve for sure. And, you know, I still want to improve and stuff, but, you know, not for the sake of improving, but just like to you know, to experience certain things in life that I'd like, or at least try to, you know, maybe not have so much regret having know that I at least, you know, put myself out there. But, um, yeah, like if push comes to shove, like, but even like, 
the idea of like laying down and rot. Let's say I don't self-improve. Let's say I decide to go neat forever and just lay down and rot and waste away. You know, even that kind of language is like sort of like built in like negativity towards like the whole neat lifestyle, like laying down and rot. Like why is it rotting, honestly? Like rotting is being in prison and staring at a cell, staring at the wall in your cell all day, trying to, you know, act tough and crap just to not get like, like, uh, you know, <laughs> effed up by other dudes. And it's like, that's actually like rotting. Like, honestly, this isn't, this isn't even like, if I just need all my life, like it honestly wouldn't even be that bad. You know, it doesn't mean I have to be, I can still try and like pursue stuff, but you know, at the end of the day, like life sucks, but maybe it isn't too bad. I think that's obviously these, I'm kind of feeling these emotions right now, just because when I woke up, cause I remember in the dream, I was on the way to prison. Like, I don't know how time works in dreams. Like, but I was like, I had like, a temporary period of like freedom before I'd go to like prison. So I was like maybe on the way to prison or I was like on the way back to my home, I forget. But when I woke up, I just felt so goddamn relieved that I actually wasn't going to prison. And, you know, I actually had my life, like my life wasn't over, you know? And for the first time in a long time, I never, felt so friggin' relieved that, you know, I was waking up to my room, my, my comfy ass room where I pretty much have all I need to live a fairly comfortable life. So, you know, that's why I was having these thoughts of, well, yeah, like, okay, you know, maybe this isn't so bad. And maybe I, you know, it really, put into perspective like all the things that I was taking for granted the fact that I have access to a computer the fact that you know it's not the best bed but my bed's pretty comfy um the fact that I can have I can take all these random I can be vitamin pilled and take random ass like supplements every day that I have a switch that I I when I got up it was like lunchtime so I like ate some food and food fucking tasted amazing like <laughs> i don't know it's kind of ridiculous how our minds can like play tricks on us like this and how like a little like random ass dream that you have can all of a sudden change your perspective change the way you see things and you know this is probably maybe it's coke maybe it's whatever but you know it felt nice the fact that i had all this freedom like uh you know might have broken my nofap streak, but you know, had to do it, had to do it for science, had to, uh, you know, show some appreciation for the fact that I had access to a lot of things that I wouldn't have in, in prison. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm an idiot, honestly. Um, and you know, I took, took a shower and I, you know, I just paid attention to like the feeling of like, warm water like you know running down like the back of my head all the way down and just like feeling that feeling of comfort and you know it's like the little things in life that you kind of take for granted but actually provide you so much satisfaction but because you're around them for so long they kind of just become that new normal for you and eventually you don't perceive them anymore but your mind is constantly looking for things to be negative about, for things to change, for things to, you know, improve to, and you know, that is important. That does have its purpose. But at the same time, I guess for me, at least, I, I definitely lost sight of all of the positives I had going on for me. And, you know, it definitely was a pretty nice reminder you know, obviously it's not great having nightmares, but 
it definitely made me feel uh refreshed in a way i don't know how else to put it like i definitely felt a massive sense of relief and you know maybe a little bit grateful for the first time in a long long time and yeah i'm not saying like people should you know forget all the bad things that have happened to them i don't intend on doing that at all but you know i think being grateful can be a good cope for the harshness of life because ultimately when you really think about it life is inherently suffering and what defines a person is how they cope with this inescapable fact uh so um yeah um i think that's a pretty good end to the video so i'm probably gonna end it there uh let me just uh Oh, you know, show some appreciation for this lovely bed that I'm lying on and kind of acting like a D-Gen right now. Well, not really. You know, I'm, I'm just joking around. I'm just being grateful. Shit. I don't know. Don't even know what I'm even saying. It feels nice. It feels comfy. I, sh I forgot how to appreciate all the comfiness in a long, long time. Anyways, um, yeah, this is a dumb video, but this is company signing out.